and Jason's right about the Pulitzer Center on Crisis Reporting. American University, I was one of the guys who helped forge a relationship with them. It's one of the key organizations in this country who are, they're, they're you know, um, funding um, uh, reporting opportunities for students overseas. And I would urge all of you students in particular, and even the professionals here who, who want to embark on a project, uh, they give out you know, hefty grants that they can really get you started. And if it's more than just the money that's involved, it's the name of the Pulitzer Center on Crisis Reporting. Once you have that on your resume, that carries a long way. So these are some of the organizations you're, who are you're, you know, bumming up and, and beginning to fill that void left by the corporate sponsors who used to pay guys like me, Bob Nicholsberg, and Ron Habib money to go out and, and cover stories. Karen, I was, gonna, I was gonna turn to you. We have the privilege of having Karen Malarkey here who's seen the, you know, this, this phenomenon from the top down. Go ahead. Uh, well, just, you know, Barstool complaining. I started at Life Magazine in the mid-60s. And, of course, you know, it was huge. And it, even then they were Barstool complaining. So I just thought I'd tell you. And, uh, of course, it's, you know, gone down. And I work in the photography department. So I've seen, seen this world shrink. Okay. But I would say about the Pulitzer's, I have, I mean, I know that they have given wonderful support to photographers for uh, work they've done. Larry Price, all sorts of people, and they've really backed it. And they've gone out and done dangerous stories. Um, I mean, there's Renee Byers' work on living on a dollar a day. She found terrific backing through UN organizations and other ones, and she was able to travel everywhere. The thing is, you have to have like a really smart idea. Let's just start there. And uh, sure, at Life, there were, you know, those days, there were a lot of outlets. But it really was the people with the smart idea, and also I would say about photographers, ones who didn't necessarily stand in the line with everybody else. So it's really the people who have a smart idea and have an interesting way, I can only speak of the photography side, uh, to show it. And they're, they're not, they're thinking ahead. And so, yes, you have to have all these skills. I, I now just started doing some adjunct coaching over at CUNY. And so I'm helping graduate students on this. And I'm always saying to them, you know, you need to know how to do everything. But you also need to think in terms of stories that um, have an appeal. And how would you show it and do it that would make it different and distinguished enough and uh, arouse people's curiosity so that they'd want to get behind it. So that is, um, you know, that's like everything in life. You've got to be, think of a way that makes your work different and unique. And uh, then someday, hopefully, you'll have a reputation like Mr. Habib to my left, who, uh, you know, you'd give, uh, I'd give him work if I was still doing it anywhere, anytime. And I wouldn't have to worry because he'd just go out there and I would know he was going to be really smart and he was going to come back with pictures that were going to be different than everybody else's. And, the, the, you know, I've been fortunate to work with some really great people through my life, and the ones that were really interesting to me were people who didn't stand where anybody else did. And they really were always looking for that picture that no one else thought to take. So I tell this to the kids I'm working with now, and I would tell that to everybody here, and I, I think it's in terms of how you write a story, and what, is, what are the aspects of this story, and what can you bring to it that is going to shine a light somewhere where no one has been looking. So, as an old broad giving out advice cheaply, I would tell you that, you know, you have to be on more, you really do have to be on your game now. Maybe more than you certainly did when I started, because there were so many outlets and so mediocrity could also get published. Now you don't get to get away with it. That's my one uh, comment. So, I, if, I, if you don't mind, I'll just piggyback on that or respond to that, I guess, a little bit. Um, the problem is, um, you know, you're competing with cat memes and like, <laughs> do you know what I mean? Like, like the, the problem isn't that you can have the most brilliant, different way of approaching something, but you're in a different playing field now. It's just, it's, it's, how do I put this? Um, it, I get somewhat frustrated because I know everybody wants to cling to that hope. Maybe if you're 
good enough, if you're different enough, if you're, you're unique and, and you know how to bring this fresh eye, but it's, it, it's just not enough anymore. Um, I, I've, I, I know, not just me, but I've seen it time and time again, people who are, they are finding different ways to look at it, and also now finding a different way is competing with the entire internet. So it's, it's, it's a little different than, you know, competing with, with, with a, a core or um, things, things like that. So, um, so this whole idea of, of, of doing things differently and catching people's eye, well, the problem is their eyes are on a million different things now. Um, and I still think, I mean, I think the advice is 100%, you know, it's all you can do. It's literally the only option is to be as, um, as, as, as innovative as possible. Um, but at the same time, I think, you know, um, the organizations like the Pulitzer Center are doing incredible work. There's also grassroots organizations. I'm part of the Coalition for Women in Journalism, which is a really great organization um, that tries to bring together women journalists and um, mentors and mentees in that type of scenario when, you, as you know, we were saying journalism students, people starting out, they need, they need to talk stuff through, especially women um, need mentors, and that's what we try to do. Um, so there are organizations doing that kind of work. You just have to find them. You just have to work them. That's really the only thing I'd say. Can I add something to that? So just building on that. Um, so you know, we've talked about the work withering up and, and lack of opportunity, but I think you know, we also should talk about you know, even if you are getting work, however much that may be, just the difficulties and sort of the scam of, of not getting paid or not getting paid on time. Like that's something that really needs to be reformed and taken a closer look at. I know there's some organizations that are trying to kind of rally the troops and create a model contract, and, and I've had a little bit of a hand in that. Um, but, you know, one of the things I did today, I live in Mexico, I came here to like go run down checks. You know, to collect, because I'm owed a lot of money. Yeah. Like we joke, like we should hire, you know, some kind of enforcer and just go around knocking on editors' doors. You know, maybe that's how a union starts, because that's what makes it, especially our now I'm in a place where, you know, I have a family, I have two children, and, you know, there is work, but even if I get it, you know, five, six months later, I mean, I'm owed more than 60 grand right now. Wow. Just to give you a clear idea of where I'm at, I'm fortunate in that I've been able to set aside some money. And I've got a little savings. I live cheap. You know, those habits have, have served me well. But, you know, that's just unacceptable. And I'm literally, like, showing up today to go talk to editors saying, look, you know, where's that check? It's been half a year since the work was out. You know, and that, I think, is a place where even, you know, a lot of these organizations that pay lip service to all these platitudes about how we need to reform the industry, like, let's set some numbers. You know, let's put some figures down. If you don't pay within 30 days, like, how much are you going to be fined? Like, this is where it's got to go. Because, you know, I've been doing this now, I don't know, 10, 12 years, and I'm still in, in a position where, I, you know, it's, it's not a sure thing for me. You know, imagine how it is if you're two, three years in just coming up, you know. That's never going to fly. So just want to put that out there. I don't know if anyone's here is with, with ACOS or any of these organizations or news organizations, but, like, that's something that needs to be addressed in earnest and fast. Because really what's gone on for a long time is criminal. You know, you're subsidizing these these multi-million dollar organizations and they're collecting the interest and all the rest of it and you're out there you know blood sweat and tears and you're not getting paid what you have earned that's got to change and i will add one thing um to that um the, the, okay so when when freelancers aren't making more than whatever the 350 dollars james foley was making something along those lines um per story and when you don't make enough money to to take care of yourself in the field, you cut corners, you take risks, you don't use a fixer, you don't use, um, you, the, the, you go with somebody who maybe is shady because he's cheaper. There's a lot of, um, of ways in which this, this industry um, can, can get people killed. Um, and, and we've already seen it, and likelihood is we're going to see it again. So I think, um, at this point, the news industry and the media has a responsibility. If they want that news, if they want the content, then they're going to have to pay for it and, 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 and provide some sort of um, security because, because otherwise it's, it's just not, um, it's not sustainable and, and it will get people hurt. On that note, I think, sorry, Cynthia, I think we have to, um, I we used to work with Cynthia, I can be tough with her. <laughs> Um, 
uh, I want to make one plug to the students for the OPC Foundation, which gives scholarships to graduating students. And I believe the deadline is December 1st, so there's not that much time. So go on the website. You have to have your good idea to write your pitch, but it has um, sparked the careers of many, many people who are now uh, brand name journalists. So thank you, Bill. Thank you, Solomay. Thank you, Jason. Everybody. Thank you.